violating anybody's rights is if everyone gave all their money and land to me so I owned all the resources, that wouldn't violate anybody's rights, but it wouldn't be a justification for the state affairs where I own everything. That would be a very bad thing for everybody to do. I'd like it, but it wouldn't be good for anybody else. So he has to show not only that you could get to this minimal state without violating rights, but it would be in people's interests to do that. What can we say on the plus side here for Nozick? Um, is he, for instance, what part of his project is involved not with responding to Rothbard in effect, which he does without mentioning Rothbard, but what part of his project is aimed at responding to Rawls? Oh, well, this is really uh, what he does. He in the second part of the book, see the first part, which I think is you uh, indicate would be the part that the uh, Rothbardians or libertarians would, such as me, would disagree with this, this justification of the minimal state. But then the second part, he says, okay, we've got a minimal state, but most people want the state to do more than just enforce uh, uh, people's pro uh, libertarian property rights say it, uh, they have more ambitious goals for the state for example in the most influential uh, 20th century uh, theorist john rawls in his famous theory of justice he wants the state to engage in various kinds of redistribution he says it, it, we shouldn't be satisfied with what rawls calls the system of natural liberty the state has to really come in and help the the worst off class so what we should be trying to do is maximize the position of the worst off class so nozick has very uh, effective i think the best discussion of rawls where he uh, really it's in the second part of chapter seven of the book where he really knocks out all rawls's arguments he really eviscerates the book in my opinion he also has very good arguments against uh, uh, Marx, Marx, Karl Marx's view of exploitation, and he has criticisms of democracy. He really uh, has, a, I think this is an extremely important contribution to libertarian theory. And I think the real reason to read Nozick, say, is against other people one might read, or there's always, there's so many good authors one could read, is that he was an extraordinarily intelligent person i mean he was uh, a really great philosopher he could come up with uh, arguments and counter arguments exa uh, uh, unusual counter examples so in what he did he was really probably the best or among the best of anyone in philosophy he could just come up with new possibilities i'll tell you one story uh, Nathan Salmon, who's a very good uh, philosopher of language, once told me that Saul Kripke, who is probably the top American philosopher today, sort of a, really a kind of philosophical genius, once said to him that Nozick was the smartest person he'd ever met. So I told Nozick that, uh, thinking he'd be happy to hear it, and he said, uh, that's why he's trying to destroy me. No, I th by the way, I think we should point out uh, who Nozick really was. I mean, he was a Harvard philosopher. He wasn't just some guy who wrote a book. Oh, oh yeah, yes, that's right. I mean, he had he had gotten uh, tenured at a very early age. I think he was about uh, uh, thirty when he got. He was a full professor at Harvard. And he, his in he wasn't. He didn't consider himself mainly a political philosopher. He was in metaphysics, theory of knowledge. He he would tend to go from one area to another. I mean, philosophical explanations is his main work in uh, metaphysics, theory of knowledge. That's a book I think people should would certainly find, find interesting. He, but he's a very interesting thinker. I mean, there are people uh, who, uh, such as Hans Hoppe, whom I think very highly, who doesn't really like Nozick as much as I do, but I mean, I think he is somebody who's, who's definitely worth uh, studying. 
can you give us uh, an example or two of arguments that Nozick makes against Rawls that show how sharp he was and or his argument against Marxian exploitation theory? Oh, well, uh, let me see. One he has where uh, Rawls says, uh, he favors what he calls the difference principle, which he's, he says we should apply, we should try to maximize uh, the well-being of the worst off class. So what Nozick says, well, uh, suppose you try, try to apply this to individual families, say, say, well, I say someone has a family, you have a number of children in your family, would you say that what you should do is try to uh, do everything you can for the child who's kind of the, the lowest in uh, ability or has the most uh, problems? I mean, obviously, you'd want to do something for the child. I mean, would you say what you should be doing in the family is just to do whatever you can for the child who's worse off? Then if you if somebody said, oh, well, maybe you wouldn't do that for the family, but society is different, he says, well, why is it different? Now, another famous argument, he says, uh, this is fa uh, suppose this is his famous Will Chamberlain argument. He says, supposing you give people the share, say, that Rawls or some other egalitarian theorist says they should have, then... We could imagine, let's say, at the time he was writing, Wilt Chamberlain was a famous basketball player. So he says, well, couldn't we imagine each person has this amount of money? Couldn't we imagine that uh, people want to watch Chamberlain play and each person gives Chamberlain a quarter? It's your money, can't you give him a quarter? But then the result is, say, that Chamberlain gets a salary of $250,000, which in those days was an enormous amount of money for a basketball player. I think now they would, that's probably what they earn a day or something. But at that time, so he's, what he's saying is look, if we start off with this egalitarian theory, then people could up, what he calls this a pattern theory, people could upset the pattern very easily because. They're taking their shares and they're just spending the money in a certain way that results in people being unequal. Then if you say, oh, well, then we can just pr stop them from doing that or, or take away the money that goes to Chamberlain, isn't that, wouldn't that require very severe interferences with people's liberty? So if we try to in uh, enforce a pattern, we'll find it's very difficult to do that in a way that uh, allows people essential liberties. Let's talk about uh, Marx for a minute, because I get, when I'm on Twitter a lot, I get people saying that it's a sham liberty that libertarians are favoring, because it really is just the freedom to starve, right? That's a very common Marxian sort of response. It's a freedom to starve. Yeah, I know I have the freedom to take a job or not take a job and to accept a wage payment or not accept it, but how, what kind of freedom is that when the alternative is starvation? So it's just a sham freedom. Does the Nozick response cut any of the sting out of that argument? Oh, oh yes. Well, what he he says there, uh, the question would be, uh, suppose somebody says, I don't have any alternative. Uh, then we wouldn't want to say, well, why not? It isn't the case that, say, suppose somebody says, uh, I someone offers this person, say, a very uh, hard labor in, the co in a coal mine, and the person said, I don't like, I, you know, that's too hard, I don't want to do that. So it isn't the case that the coal miner is going to say, well, I'm going to use violence, I'm going to get the agents of the state to chain you to the mine and do that. You're free to go try to get a better job elsewhere. Now, what if you say, oh, but look, that's the best alternative open to me. Uh, you know, the, uh, uh, maybe that's all I can do. I don't have any real skills. So then 
what Nozick says there is, well, he's making a concession. He says he's not going to say that any case that doesn't involve violence or the threat of violence should be viewed as non-coercive. But he says if it's the case that other people are acting within their rights, then you haven't shown that you're being coerced just because your alternatives aren't desirable. And he gives what I think is a very, is kind of a typical Nozick example. He said, let's assume that uh, people in a certain society, eat, say we have equal numbers of men and women, and each person wants to get married to someone of the opposite sex, I guess in those days, things were a bit, bit less complicated than now. So he says, let's assume everyone on both lists ranks the people of the opposite sex, that who's the most desirable, next most desirable. So, so everyone has the same ranking, like all the men will say, uh, this woman is the most desirable, this is a second, this is a third, and so on. And the women will say, this is the most desirable man, second most, so on. So then we imagine the people, each person knows the one on the, knows about the list. So then we imagine the men and women pairing off. So he says, well, you know, then the most desirable man will pair off with the most desirable women, woman, and so on. So suppose you get down to the end of the list. So say the most, desi the least desirable man, least desirable woman, That'll, if they want to get married at all, they'll have to pick each other. So each one will say, well, if I want to get married, I have to pick the least desirable person. But you couldn't say they're coerced because each person on the list has acted in accord with his or her rights. So if what knows its challenges, if somebody wants to say, well, this uh, worker who faces undesirable alternatives is being coerced, then the person who has raised that objection has to show why this case, the case of the worker, is different from his marriage case. And it, he poses that a challenge. He says, it isn't enough to say you have undesirable alternatives. You have to do more than that to show that there is coercion if there is no violence or threat of violence. What do you think people ought to read out of the people we've talked to today? Would you say that, I mean, Soul, there's plenty of stuff to read, and I'm going to put a couple of, of uh, my, I think, I personally like a couple of his books that are not as well known. There, there are a few that everybody recommends. I think Civil Rights, Rhetoric, or Reality is uh, an amazing book, short book. Every page blows you away, so I'm going to put that up there. Um, definitely put Anarchy, State, and Utopia, but... What else from the people we've talked about do you think are, is worth looking at? Oh, well, I think uh, by soul is what knowledge and decisions is a very good book. Uh, now, by Epstein, uh, I would say his book, Takings, is very much worth looking at. That gives you kind of his basic framework of uh, how he gets a pro laissez-faire view out of the Constitution. That's the book where he says, well, uh, the government's power to take property for public use, eminent domain, is should be limited that you have to compensate people with the full economic value of what you've taken. You can't, the government also has to compensate people when as a result of its actions, people can't use their property as profitably as before. Now, he has a new one, which I think is called uh, The Natural Right. What is it? Uh, the new book on the Constitution. It was just published by Harvard. It's a more comprehensive book, giving his, his views. Now, on Nozick, uh, I would recommend one called The Nature Rationality. I like that book. is very good. And then, of course, The Philosophical Explanations is very good. And uh, anything by him is, is, worth, is worth reading, I think. All right. So this is going to be a chock 
full show notes page. It'll be tomwoods.com slash 695, where you can get links to these books that we've been talking about. And um, are you on Twitter, David, or just Facebook? I have, I'm on Twitter, but I almost never post anything on it. Ah, all right. Maybe we got to somehow lure you in because uh, I've sort of been converted to the inanity of Twitter in, in recent months, and uh, it'd be fun to have you over there, but it would just drive you crazy. You know, there, there's no point in wasting a good mind like yours on Twitter. But I am looking forward to seeing you in a few weeks in uh, Auburn at the Mises Institute for the Mises University Summer Program. Oh, oh yes, I, I, that would be nice. I'm looking forward to that, yeah. It's, it's going to be a great... We're going to have the whole family there. So oh, I'm that's take, wonderful. I'm going to take my 13-year-old to some of the sessions, and it, it'll be a lot of fun. Oh, oh, I'm sure she'll do better than most of the students. Well, I, I tried to say that to her without giving her a, you know, <laughs> a complex, uh, you know, good or bad. But anyway, David, thanks for your time. Uh, always fun talking to you. Oh, same here, Tom. Thanks. All right, that's going to do it for another episode. I'm clawing my way back to five episodes a week. I'm going to get there soon. I'm getting settled in here. Things are going fine. But it's, you know, it's a long transition when you move. So we're getting there to five episodes a week. That is coming. In the meantime, I did mention at the very outset of this episode that we do have this wonderful private Facebook group. It's one of many, many, many perks you get as a supporter of the show. So if you enjoy the show, you will definitely enjoy all the goodies and benefits that you get as a supporting listener, particularly the Tom Woods Show Elite private Facebook group. Man, you have no idea what's going on in there, but boy, do you want to. So check it out at supportinglisteners.com if you feel like the show has been benefiting you. And while you're waiting for five episodes a week to return, you can always listen to old episodes, right? Have you listened to all 695 of them? You know, do an examination of conscience here and find that out. But supportinglisteners.com is where all the cool people are, and you'd sure warm my heart. All right, more episodes coming before you know it. Thanks for listening. Become a smarter libertarian in just 30 minutes a day. Visit tomwoods.com to subscribe to the show for free, and we'll see you next time.
shall be.